Hi, folks. This is Mark by Mark A. Foster, Ph.D., for the Institute for Dialectical Metarealism. I will read to you an article from the Times of Israel, which places uh, Benny Gantz's uh, moderate party, centrist party, and the more right-wing parties that form with Likud, uh, Netanyahu's government, on a collision course. And I think that is a good way of describing it. That term is not used in the article, but I think definitely there is the potential for a crash between those two different sides of Netanyahu's government. Um, I'm sure that Netanyahu, being a smart man, knew that that was always a possibility. The larger your coalition, the more diverse it is the less likely it is that it will last. The smaller your coalition, the less diverse it is, the more the chances are that it will endure. And so things do not look very good for Bibi Netanyahu right now, but we will see. And so I will read you the article again, which places Gantz on one side and the right-wing parties on the other with Bibi Netanyahu standing squarely in the middle, having to make some tough decisions or negotiations which may or may not lead to the fall of his present government. So I'll pu I will put on my spectacles and then read for you uh, the article. Um, it is a short one. Uh, the article reads, In Ultimatum to Netanyahu, Benny Gantz, demands post-war plan by June 8th, or he'll quit coalition. Dateline. Reuters. May 18th, 2024. And here is the article. Benny Gantz demands that Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu commit to an agreed vision for the Gaza conflict that would include stipulating who might rule the territory after the war with Hamas. Gantz says he wants the war cabinet to form a six-point plan by June 8th for Gaza, the return of hostages, northern Israel, efforts toward normalization with Arab states, and more. If his expectations are not met, Gantz says, he will withdraw his centrist party from the Premier's emergency government. And that is the end of the article. So as I said, um, Bibi Netanyahu is now caught right in the middle. Um, with this move that Gans has taken, he basically threatens to tear uh, the coalition apart. Uh, I am sure that there will be negotiations. There are always negotiations in these kinds of situations. Whether they will be successful, who knows? Uh, I do not know these people. I don't know how flexible they are, uh, how willing they are or are not to compromise on certain things. But it does appear to me that the more right-leaning right uh, parties in uh, Netanyahu's government are pretty, pretty solid and pretty steadfast. Uh, in their desire to capture and destroy Rafa. Many of them, I think, would be happy to see Gaza or the people in Gaza entirely eliminated, whereas um, Benny Gantz obviously does not share that view, and so he wants some type of vision for where the war cabinet is going. And in his view, apparently, the war cabinet has not yet provided that vision, at least not to him and his party. And so that is the basis, it seems to me, for why Gans is now making this very public threat. Um, often these threats are made behind closed doors. Gans is not making a threat behind closed doors. He is making this threat out in the open so that everyone knows that he will lead leave the government of Bibi Netanyahu if there is not a plan by by the eighth of next month. 
So we will have to see what happens for the time being. This has been Mark by Mark A. Foster, Ph.D. for the Institute for Dialectical Metarealism. Have a pleasant day and an even better day tomorrow.